Hi guys, welcome back to Come Audacity. I'm going to be doing a series of videos on my childhood because my childhood was awesome. I have awesome memories of growing up. I grew up in Red Hills in rural St. Andrew. Not far at all from the town but far enough away to feel like country and it was pretty much bush. So, and I lived down in a valley cause we called them um, Pican Valley, you know, and it was, to us, we were, we were poor, but we, we weren't aware of being poor, really. We just felt, we just were enjoying our lives. I grew up in a very extended family, lots of cousins, aunties, grandparents, parents, siblings, and so on. So, I'm a very nostalgic person. I've always been. You know, I was nostalgic from I was a child. I was nostalgic before I had anything to be nostalgic about. So, you can imagine even now how, how you know, I'm very sentimental. Always thinking back at, you know, the past and just, just relishing those moments. And I find that the book, when I write books, when I write stories about childhood and those, those kind of things, those are the ones that I really feel more connected with. And I, you know, I'm on several groups on, on social media that focus on Jamaican life back then. And what I'll do whenever I see pictures that, that tell about our life growing up. Well, I grew up in the 80s, right? born in mid 70s, grew up in the 80s. So whenever I see pictures of how life was, that kind of thing, I would save the picture and actually print the picture. So I have framed portraits, you know, collection, collages of these pictures and they're very, they mean a lot to me and I'm very sentimental. So I'm going to be doing a couple of videos, maybe two or three videos on my childhood, the things that I remember, the things that stand out to me. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is the telephone. So when I was growing up, when I was a child, um, we, had, we actually had the, those telephones that you had to dial, you know, so you had seven digits in the phone number you had to dial them one by one and it spin and come back around and you would dial again spin and come back around but this was only for persons who were well to do you know only persons in the upper classes had telephones at home make that clear right so the rest of us we had to use the phone booth so in every you know, you know in the community you would have a phone booth, typically blue and white, I remember it being blue and white, and you would go there, and you had to have your coins, you had to have, so if you're making a local call, it's certain a certain amount of coins, if you're making an international call, a certain amount of coins, and I always used to remember saying, how oh, do these international call, how oh, the number's so long, and I didn't understand anything about country code and area code and that kind of stuff. All you knew was that the local numbers just had seven digits and these, these um, foreign numbers had like ten digits. And you know at that time you actually were memorizing dozens of numbers. People would typically be, be memorizing these numbers, these phone numbers, you know. So our memory was utilized and was much sharper. Then you could reel out, you want to call uncle, you know his number out of your head. Nowadays, you know, we have numbers stored in the phone and you just, you just um, scroll and, and press the person's name. You, do, you, you don't even remember the door. You don't even memorize the number or, or even think of committing it to memory because you don't have to. But that time, those times, you, you were, you just automatically remembered because you had to be dialing these numbers over and over. So you would just know dozens of numbers out of your head. All right, so I remember going to the phone booth was actually, it was an event. 
it was an event. Usually you would have something very important to tell someone. You don't just die, you don't just go to say hi. Something happened, something important must have happened. Um, and, and going there was an event and you had you get your coins and you go and you put in your coins and you dial your number. I remember going to I remember when I when I passed my common entrance exam, you know, going to the phone booth. Our phone booth was on a hill, right this right um, in front of the police station in Red Hills. I remember going up the hill and, and it was just this grand thing making this call to my uncle who, who lived overseas telling him that I was successful in the common interest exam. You know, nowadays you just call up people, um, hi, where are you, what you doing, that, that kind of thing. No, telephone calls were events, something special had to have happened or was to happen. Or you wanted something or you know calling your relative abroad asking for money or asking for stuff that kind of thing right and, and you had to dial up you actually had to dial up and memorize these these long numbers these long and if, if your coins if the value of the coins ran out you know the call would be disconnected and you had to dial again and put in more coins the other thing the letters now, communicate is another form of communication. We actually wrote letters, and these letters took forever. Well, if, let's say you were writing to someone in the United States, that would take like two weeks to get there, to get to them, unless it's a telegram you're sending, right? Which you know would cost more, and it, it would get there much quicker, telegram. Um, but typically, it would take two weeks for the person to get the letter and then assuming that they respond immediately which they might not then it would take another two weeks to get back to you the response so that's like within the space of a month you might have something you feel is urgent or you feel is important you feel is worthy of correspondence but these letters would take that long to get there and then to for, for the return trip and I remember going to the post office we actually went to the post office like um, well in my household um, we had the Jones family the Hunter family so whenever I went to the post office you know you join the line and you go up to the post mistress and I would say anything for Jones or Hunter that was my line anything for Jones or Hunter <laughs> And I guess they, they just knew, because they knew people in the community, right? It was a um, fairly small community. We knew each other. And so she'd, she'd, have, she'd have her pile of letters and she scrolled through alphabetical order and she said, no, nothing for Jones, nothing for Hunter or whatever. Or she'd give you your letter. And, um, and then you'd be on your way. I remember... There was a show on TV called Circle Square. I think it was a Canadian um, show, children's children's um, show, and they used to they used to advertise to say, "Well, write to us, and we'll send you our songbook." Because it was a it was a show that they sang, Circle Square. Um, I think that was the first time I, I remember writing to an organization. And then when I got that book, I felt so special. I felt, my God, they actually got my letter and they sent me their book. <laughs> you know, I had that, that Circle Square song book for a long time. And, you know, using it to sing the songs on the program. But that's how it was with, with letters. And we had pen pals. So you could get a pen pal. They were published in the newspaper. You could write to someone from Africa, from the United States, from different countries and keep up that correspondence, you know. Of course, those letters would take longer, like three weeks or more coming from further away. But it built your story, your, your letter writing skills, your expression, all of those things. You know, um, the other day, one of my Facebook friends reached out to me and she said, Let's let's do this pen pal thing. Let's start a pen pal thing again, you know, because 
we did that as children. It was like part of our ritual of, of, of growing up. And it's something that is missed. It's something, it's a skill that is not, you know, children don't hardly know to express themselves anymore. They, they, they're using the, the um, code, the, what, the, the, the social media code, abbreviations, not knowing how to express themselves in real words, you know. So my generation and, and the generation before, I think we were very sharp in our letter writing skills, story writing skills, um, expression in general, because of, of the, we actually wrote letters. <laughs> we actually wrote letters. The next thing I want to talk about, we had something called a bottle torch. It's what you would call, it's what is called um, a Molotov cocktail. So like when we had to go outside in the night because there was no street light. In the valley where I live, there was street lights on the main at the square. But in the valley where I lived at that time, there was no street light. So if we had to do anything outside for any length of time, you would have a bottle torch. So what we did, we got maybe a drinks bottle, one of those soda bottles, and put kerosene oil in it and we'll roll up newspaper and stuff it in and then you know shake down a little of the oil and light it and that would be our bottle torch um so you'd put that so, so it works like a lamp right and, and of course we had lamps the home sweet home lamps you know and candles and whatever but we had electricity but this is for outside like if you had to like if you wake up in the night or somebody had to use the toilet in the night because our toilet was outside the toilet we didn't have inside plumbing the bathroom was outside away from the house the toilet was away from the house the kitchen well we had a kitchen attached to the house as well as one away from the house so you might wake up in the middle of the night and want to to use the, the, the latrine the pit latrine and you know you'd have you'd light your bottle toy or just go in the in the dark of course we had chimneys we call chimneys um kept under the bed like if you wake up and you want to pee you have to use the chimney or people call it the chamber pot <laughs> right so we had to use we use that in the night when you wake up and you want to pee right but for other other um more intricate matters you would have to go outside to the latrine and take care of business. We also had what we called a fire pan. Now the fire pan was for mosquitoes because you know we live in the bush, live in the tropics, live in the bush, so you know that um, mosquitoes come down around about five o'clock, six o'clock, they would descend on you. And so um, you didn't want you you weren't ready to go inside at that time. You'd still be outside doing whatever, catching as much of the, the evening. And so what we did was we'd get you know like the, the, the paint pans, the metal paint pans with the handle, and we'd put um, some some scraps of wood, some paper, some bush. The green bush was the, the main thing because after you lit that and you put the green bush in it to smoke and the smoke was what we wanted right so we we after that started smoking we'd walk through the rooms and and wave it around swirl it to, to spread the smoke under the bed under the couch in the corners to to chase out the mosquitoes out of the house and if you were outside then wherever you were sitting like if you were sitting in the shed whatever you would have you'd put it um close by not close enough to be um drowning you in the smoke right Stif suffocating you in the smoke but close by to, to chase away the mosquitoes you know so you could do what you wanted to do outside until you're ready to go inside all right now we also had when i thought talk, i talked about the pit latrine Yes, we had a pit latrine, no indoor plumbing, no, no flush toilet as we call it. We call it flush toilet 
just a few houses had what we call flush toilet. Most of us had a pit latrine where I grew up, right, in Red Hills. And so my grandfather, my grandfather made, built that pit latrine. And when it was, you know, when it got to a point where it was full after many, 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 many years, then they, they dug another one. So you would, there's a special way you have to do it and put the, the line it with, with, with stones and sand and so on for the drainage and, and all of that. So there's a special way and it has to be a, spe a certain distance away from the house. Um, and we had, you know, in the country areas, you would, from time to time you'd hear stories of small children falling into the pit latrine. But for the most part, you know, it was, it was safe and we used it. And yes, we used toilet paper, but if you run out of toilet paper, we used newspaper. That's what we use if toilet paper run out. So like I was, I was joking in a video the other day about this whole toilet paper crisis in the COVID lockdown. And I was saying, just use, there, there are so many alternatives. <laughs> We, that's what we use if we run out of toilet paper we just got some newspaper right so that was country living that's how I grew up and we had no shame in our game we were perfectly happy you know we did what we had to do um, yeah so we had outside latrine outside bathroom shower actually no well some persons would set up their, 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 their shower but we had no running water so we had to use a standpipe there was a there was a standpipe in the middle of the valley where all the which served all the houses so you actually had to get your buckets and go to the standpipe and take it back in several trips um water for the kitchen water for the for, for the to fill up the drums water for bathing so when you're ready to bathe it does get your bath pan Go to the standpipe, fill it up with water, and take it into the bathroom, and you would, you would bathe from the pan. That's how it was, right? No running water, so we had to. Luckily, up my house was just in front of the standpipe. Our yard, we had a big yard, big dirt yard, full of fruit trees. Every, almost every fruit tree imaginable. Star apple. Mango, June plum, uh, guinea, custard apple, almost every fruit, apple. So the yard was big. Well, for us, you know, you, I always hear people say when you go back to your childhood home, it just looks so small, and you're wondering how come it looks so big to me. Well, you were little, you were you were physically smaller, so it looked huge to you. So my yard was huge to me, and I never went back there for maybe two decades, two and a half decades, and that house that I grew up in now was demolished, right? But the yard was just across from the standpipe, and so very convenient. But we still had to fill our kegs, our buckets, whatever, and take it back in. And we had... We had an outside kitchen and an inside kitchen. So we had a stove inside, you know, but some things, you know, it, it just don't taste good unless you cook it on the wooden fire. And when my grandma was doing her baking, like she was baking her tota, her puddings, she would use her wooden fire or, or the charcoal and bake her tota, bake her pudding. She, oh, my grandma, had this thing called Natty Patty which she named after herself. She was called Miss Natty and my grandfather was Miss Natty. So she used to make Natty Patties with, um, in the middle of the patty was coconut, grated coconut with sugar and then she'd wrap the, knead the flour and wrap it around that and fry them and she would sell them. Right, so she, when she was doing most of her cooking, it was in the outside kitchen and like we're washing the plates, you could use the ashes from that, from the fire, the ashes from the, 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 um, the remains of the fire. 
and scrub the pots and they will be very shiny scrub the outside especially because when the pots when you use the pots on a wooden fire they it, it gets very black so you could use the ashes and scrub it and get it very clean all right now the tv television for us telev our house was like a hub because many of the other kids didn't have television sets at their house so we had a black and white television set and you know at that time it was only one station one television station um J jamaica broadcasting corporation right jbc and it wasn't an all-day thing it would sign on at a certain time in the morning or in the afternoon and then sign off at a certain time in the night and for the rest of the time it was just a you know those bars that you see <laughs> i don't know if some of some of you probably don't even know what what i'm talking about but they would have something looking like the spectrum um to sh to tell you that not no program was being aired right it, it, it was signed off here and black and white and then we got a colored television so our house was where many of the little the children came and they watch movies they watch matinee they watch comedies and so on we were like a hub for that when when it was the night for doppy show the horror shows you know these guys will be watching these shows and then they have they have to leave and walk back home lucky for us we were already at home to just go under the covers <laughs> go over under the covers and hide after watching that scary movie you know these other guys had to walk some of them lived a good way from our house in the dark they had to walk um yeah so there was a sign sign off and you had to wait for it to sign on back and then eventually many years after that we had another tv station and then gradually we, we had access to in that time the rich people had um satellite issues so the the, the, the thing was to have a satellite dish that, that you could pick up channels from abroad and then eventually long after that you'd have cable and so on coming in and, and other TV, local channels coming in and finally for this video I want to talk about the photographs now just like with the telephone going to the telephone booth was an event having your portrait taken was an event Either you're going to go to the photo studio, you know, put on your, your best, your Sunday best, go to the photo studio and fix yourself and take your portrait. And however it come out, that was it. That was it. There was no filter. There was no adjusting nothing to the right. No. If it come out and your eyes look like this and your smile look weird or or or, or, the, or the flash made the, the little red lights come in your eyes anyway it come out that's how you're gonna take it or you have to pay to take it over <laughs> i used to have these roving photographers who'd come around in the community like on a sunday and you you know you would pay for them to so they'd put you to in the position and take your picture and you'd have to wait till the next week to, to see the, the picture and you better pray that it come you better pray that your eyes weren't closed when the flash go off you better pray that you weren't looking all over the place one chance <laughs> one chance you had to get it right or you take what you get when it come out now you if you had a camera you could go to the photo studio and buy your film so you could buy rolls of film we use film you could get a 12 pack, you could get a 24 pack, you could get 36 pack. Um, black and white, but mainly color. At that time, black and white was like vintage and expensive for, for the, big, the film um, in the 80s. So you get your film, put in the film in the camera with your battery and everything. And when those 12 film finish, you have to reel that up, take it out put it in the case, put in more film if you have and then you take that to the photo studio and you have to wait like a week unless you're going to pay for quicker service uh, eventually they started having quicker service but 
back in the day, 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 you had to wait a week to go back for your pictures and pray that they come out good. Pray, pray that they come out good. There was no filter this and adjusting that and taking 20 and choose the one. No. No, ma'am. <laughs> that was it. Alright, so I'm going to do about two more videos on my awesome childhood, the memories of childhood. So that's it for this video. Please join me for the other two.